All right, so this is going to be the first video in this series, which is going to be a series of guide videos for the category 1438 for Katamari Damacy reroll, although it also applies to non-reroll, I guess, uh, which nobody plays anymore, so it might not be relevant. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're not on that window. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what the category is. So it's also sometimes called balloons percent. You might see it referred to that as that sometimes. Um, and the reason for this is that, as you can see in this image here, this is um, the prints on the collection screen. If you go on the Princess Planet to the tree, you'll see your collection. Normally, he only has one balloon, but when you complete the collection, uh, the king has a little message when you go to that screen, and then you have five balloons. So that is the goal of this category, essentially, is to get five balloons, or to complete the collection by collecting all 1,438 objects, uh, which is why it's called 1438. Uh, I'm good, by the way. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, and there's another thing I need to talk about, which is RBA. <laughs> so RBA is a separate category that we introduced recently, and it stands for Remove Bull Bullshit Auto Scrollers. And the reason for this category is that there are certain levels in the game that are auto scrollers, essentially. Um, and those levels are the constellations, so Cancer, Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, Corona, and um, Cygnus. So all of those levels, if you exit the level by pausing the game and selecting Leave Level, uh, it will not count as having completed the level. So the objects that you picked up will not be saved your collection, which means that you have to wait for the timer to run out on all of those levels, um, which makes them auto-scrollers, essentially. And uh, not only that, we have to play all of these levels twice each uh, for a reason that I will be going into later. Um, which overall adds about an hour to the run of just unskippable, a lot of it just like waiting and not very interesting gameplay. So we created a new category that removes the auto-scrollers, and the way it does that is we made a simple mod for the game, uh, and I'll be showing where you can get that later, and um, all it does is it changes like one line of code which when you quit on the constellation levels, it treats it like it would any other level, and it goes to the end screen. Uh, you still do need to complete the goal for that level. Uh, there's a certain minimum number of the constellation-specific objects that you need to get on each one of those levels. Uh, so you do need to do that, but as long as you do that, it lets you quit the level and save your progress. So, resources. So, I'm going to be bringing up the speedrun.com leaderboard for reroll. You can see that here. Uh, and you can see if we go here, we have the 1438 objects category, so that is the main category. And then here is 1438 objects RBA mod. Uh, and the only difference is that you can use that mod in this category. So if we go here to the forum, uh, you can see there's a sticky thread called 1438 Objects Category Resources. And this thread contains all of the resources that I use uh, for this category. Um, the first one is the item spreadsheet. So this is going to be a very important one, especially for new people who are learning the route. Uh, and even for experienced people, it's just very, very important. So this is a spreadsheet, and we'll go to that real quick, that contains a list of all of the objects in the game. 
Uh, so all the way down to the Hoshinos. And um, these are in the order that you will see them in the collection if you go to the by location sorting. So you have the living room first, and then uh, each, each group of five here is a row. So it'll go uh, left to right, and then there will be four rows per page. So when you're uh, doing your item check, which uh, we will also be talking about a little bit later, and you need to find an item, you can look at the item that's next to it and search for that in the spreadsheet, and then it will be right next to that. Uh, and then there's some other information here. So it has the size you need to collect the object. It has the location of the object. Uh, and this will not be every location where you could find it, only the, more, the most useful locations. Um, so for example, eye drops, it says make a star one. You can find eye, dro eye drops on a few different levels. Um, yeah, it's also in the Discord, I should maybe. You can probably find it in the Discord. I don't think I need to go over that. Uh, and if you can't, you can ask somebody there. And they will be able to help you. Um, but yeah, eye drops is on a lot of levels. But I only put Mega Star 1 here because you pretty much are always going to get it on Mega Star 1. So it's not really worth knowing the other locations. Uh, some of them I do list multiple locations. Uh, like Nail Clipper... Uh, make a star one and make a star eight. Now you'll notice for a lot of the items it says unmissable instead of a location. Unmissable essentially means um, it, it's on the any percent route or like near the any percent route where you go. So it's pretty difficult to actually miss this item. Uh, so it's not really going to be something you're going to worry about too much. Um, some of them you will still have to, like, it is, it is possible you don't get some of these items, so just know that if it says unmissable, it means it's probably somewhere on the any percent route. Uh, and then we have best time to collect, which this column might not be accurate because I haven't updated a lot of these in a while, but theoretically this is supposed to be, um, the best level to collect the object on, and we're going to talk about what levels we play and how many times we play them in a little bit. Uh, there are some other tabs at the bottom here. About half of them are for We Love Katamari. There's one for objects that are different in the PS2 version, uh, which you'll need to know if you're running that version, which I don't expect people to do, but you never know. Uh, this, this one, this tab is uncompleted at the time of recording, so don't bother with that. And then this one is items by level, which might not be completely accurate, but, uh, the idea is just to group them by level and then what, uh, which playthrough of the level we get the item in. But yeah, you're mainly going to be using this first page here. That's the most useful. Uh, so the next resource is the route notes. This is just a Google Doc that contains notes on the route. Uh, it is currently very incomplete and um, a little bit hard to read. Uh, so I'm not going to probably talk about this too much because a lot of this is just stuff that we'll be talking about in the individual level videos when we go over that. The one important thing in this document is at the very top here, constellation requirements. This is the number of objects you need in each of the constellation levels to complete the level. So Cancer, you need 10 crabs. Cygnus, you need 30 swans, etc. Uh, this is pretty important to remember. So what I do is I put it on my splits for those levels. I'll, I'll put Cancer and then parentheses 10 so I remember how many I need. Uh, this next one, I'm not going to click on it because it's just a Google Drive link to a download, but this is a, um, a file that has images of all of the items. So this was originally made by this Twitter account, Katamari Items, uh, but I renamed them with the actual item names. So we can look at that real quick. Um, I have it open over here. 
it just has uh, images of all of the items in the game so that if there's an object you're looking for and you don't know what it looks like, like say you're looking for um, a flower pot, you can just search for it right here and there are a few different flower pots but you just click on the one you're looking for and you can see an image of it. Uh, so I don't know if everyone uses that but it is pretty useful and I do like to use it so put that there. Uh, and then next we have a few different versions of this one but these are maps from the position you start on the overworld to each of the levels. So uh, when you when you finish a level it'll send you back to the prince's planet right and then you'll press R2 to go over to Earth and when it puts you on Earth you always start in the same spot relative to all of the levels. So for example um, say we want to go to Megastar 5. Well, we see here that that's this green one. Am I capturing my cursor, actually? Yeah, I am. Okay. Just had to check that. So we would follow the green line and just go straight up, and we would get to Megastar 5. Uh, this one has the constellations, so if we want, let's say, um, Corona is the red and yellow line, so we would follow that direction, and we would get to the level eventually. And there's a, it's you, it starts you at a different spot on the PS2 version, so there's a separate one for PS2, as opposed to reroll. Uh, but yeah, they're all just different versions of that. So that should be everything for resources let me just make sure there's nothing else also if you aren't on the discord uh, I definitely recommend joining the discord server for Katamari speedrunning which you can find the link to that on speedrun.com I think if you click on discord here yeah it'll just give you a link um, I'm on there and a lot of other people are on there who are very helpful. Oh, yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention is to download the 1438 RBA mod, you go to the Resources tab and it'll be under Patches down here. So this is the RBA mod. There's also an IL Practice mod, which was made by Grass. Uh, and that is very useful when you're practicing levels, uh, mainly for any percent. I don't know if there's really a lot of support for the constellations still. Um, but yeah, that's that's a very useful mod for practice. Okay, so I think we can move on to the next slide here. So now we're going to talk about the route. So I'm just going to go through this uh, one bullet point at a time. So we start out with Stars and Moon Part 1. Um, hmm. I'm thinking before I get into this, I might want to talk about... Yeah, I want to talk about something else first. So, in order to get every object in the game, we need to get all of the cousins. Now, the cousins... Um, there's one cousin on each level, except for Gemini, which is the twin level, so of course there are two cousins on that level. And cousins are, um, the prince's cousins. Let me think of one to show. I can show Ace. There's Ace. Uh just so people know what I'm talking about. Here's Velvet. So just all of those little guys with the prince-like heads. Oh, he did add them? Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, so the cousins are unique in that they actually don't show up the first time you play through a level. They will only show up on the second playthrough and beyond. So you have to play through level once, and then the second time the cousin will be there. 
However, there's one more uh, caveat to that, and that is that no cousins will show up at all until you beat Make the Moon for the first time, which is like the final level of the game, essentially. So, but it will still count, it will still count the playthroughs before that as your first playthrough. So like, if you play through one to nine and then Make the Moon, uh, after that, cousins will start showing up on 1 to 9 and Moon the next time you play them, but the constellations you'll still have to play twice. So it's a little bit confusing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that is going to influence uh, our route because it means it's absolutely necessary to play each level at least two times. And so... That lets us um, do some interesting things. So the first thing we do is Stars and Moon Part 1, and that is just, uh, we're going to go straight through the game, uh, basically doing all the levels that we do in any percent just to complete the game, uh, but on some of them we're going to do them a little bit differently. And I do recommend that you learn how to play any percent uh, before trying 1438. I probably should have opened the video with that, but I didn't uh, think about it, so I'm just going to put that right here. Uh, these guide videos are basically going to assume that you're already familiar with any percent, which is kind of necessary for this route, so it'll be helpful to just assume that. So... Um, as you know then from any percent, uh, you do have to do one non-main level uh, to get through all of the levels. So for that, we are going to just do the same thing we do in any percent and do the bear level and just get the small bear. Now there's actually only one unique bear uh, that we can only get in the bear level, and that is the Kintaro bear. But uh, since we know that we have to play each level twice, like I said, uh, the first time we play the bear level, we can just get the small bear so it goes fast, and then when we play it again later, we'll get the Kintaro bear and the cousin. So what this is going to look like is you're going to play 1 through 5, and you're just going to do the any percent route on those. Um, there are probably some items that you'll want to make sure you get on the route, but it's essentially just going to be any percent and just doing those levels as fast as possible. Uh, the one exception is that on Make a Star 2 we want to get the ring, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. You don't have to know about rings yet. Um, and then on 6 through Moon we're going to do item routes. So let me explain what item routes are. Um, item routes are essentially when we play through the level and get all of the items that we need to get on that level that we don't already get in the any percent route. So for pretty much every level there's going to be two playthroughs. One of them is going to be just as fast as possible and the other one is going to be getting as many items as possible. Um, and we'll talk about what the individual routes, uh, item routes look like for each level in subsequent videos. Um, and yeah, when we do bear level, we just get the fast bear. Let's see. I can't remember if we routed... This is something that... Um, did not come up when I was trying to figure out everything I needed for this video. So give me one second here. Yeah, I think we do still do it this way. I'll probably have to re revisit this at some, time, some, at some point, but... Uh, so after we do six to moon items, we are going to do one to five items. And when we do one to five items, we've already played those levels once, 
and we've completed Moon now, so we are also going to get the Cousins on those. Uh, we are not, however, going to play 6 through Moon any percent at this point, uh, for a reason that will be discussed later. So that's it for Stars and Moon Part 1. After that, we move on to the Cow level. So, one thing about the Cow level and the Bear level is that, um, as you probably know from playing the game casually, uh, these levels can be pretty annoying because if you pick up any cow or any bear, depending on the level, uh, it will just instantly end the level. So if you're trying to go for a specific cow and you accidentally pick up a different one, you'll have to just play the level again and you'll lose some time. So because of that, I wanted to route them as early in the route as possible. And this is to theoretically make it easier to reset if you lose a lot of time on these levels. Um, the route is still, like, even I haven't grinded it enough uh, to get to the point where I would, like, actually reset here. Unless it was, like, just completely terrible. Uh, but I think it does make sense to put it early in the game, uh, early in the route for that reason, either way. I wouldn't be too worried about resetting, but, like, it just makes the most sense, I think. So, on the cow level, uh, there are certain cows that you can only get on that level, so we'll be getting those. In total, if you play optimally, you'll have to play the cow level five times. Um, so the first time... There are five different cows that we get, and we're going to get them in order of biggest to smallest. Uh, because, again, if you, it's possible that it, when you're going for the big cow, you accidentally get a smaller one that you need. And so if that happens, you can just not get the smaller one. Whereas if you were doing smallest to biggest, you would have already gotten that one. So uh, that would be worse. So the first one we get is the holy cow, which is the biggest cow. And on each of these, well, on this one, there's a couple of other objects that we need to get, but we'll talk about that in that video. Uh, the second one, we get the cow umbrella, which is on the beach, and we also get the polar bear this time, so that we don't have to get it in the bear level. And uh, on the second playthrough, remember that the second playthrough is when the cousins start showing up, so we will also be grabbing the cousin on that one. Third playthrough, we get Cute Cow. For fourth playthrough, we get Cow Vending Machine. And fifth playthrough, we get Cow Pylon. And we'll be talking about those more in, uh, in later videos, so right now I'm just going to go through everything. So next is bear level, and like I said earlier, we just need Kintaro bear there, and then we also get the cousin, which is probably the most difficult cousin in the game. Uh, we'll talk about that when we do the bear level video. Um, and then after that, we move on to North Star. So North Star is a pretty short level. Uh, that is the level where you have to get as close to 10 meters as possible. Um, the closer you are to 10 meters, the happier the king will be. However, uh, you can actually finish the level as soon as you get to 5 meters. So what we're going to be doing on that level is just getting the objects we need, getting to 5 meters, which I'll be explaining how to do that in that video, and then just ending the level at that point. And then, of course, we have to play this twice to get the cousin. And since this is such a short level and there's really not much we need here, uh, we're just going to do both playthroughs now. Uh, I have not explained why we're saving the 6 through Moon second uh, any percent playthroughs yet, but I will get to that soon. Next up, we have Constellations Part 1. So in this one, we're just going to play through every constellation once, and we're going to do the item routes. So... We'll be getting all of the objects that are unique to those constellations, or that are easiest to get in those constellations. Um, 
I want to take a second here as well to talk about RBA versus non-RBA for this section. So if you're playing non-RBA, you are of course going to have to wait out the timers on all of these levels, which means a couple of things. Um, the main thing that it means is that you can basically get every object on the level at this point for free. Free meaning uh, it costs you zero time technically since you have to wait out the timer for the level anyway. So in non-RBA, essentially what we do is just get everything we can here, try to get all the objects, um, which is pretty straightforward on most of the levels. You do have to be careful you don't miss uh, some of the things on the bigger ones, but uh, if you do miss them, it's not a big deal because of something we will be talking about in a second. Um, in the RBA category, though, since we don't have auto scrollers, uh, we don't get free zero time items here, which means we do actually have to route up the levels uh, and try to save as much time as possible. So that changes a few of the objects that we get in the other levels, since if you can get them for free on the constellations, then you should do that. But if you can't, then there might be another place you can get them that is easier. Um, and that shouldn't be too big a concern. I'm mostly going to be focusing on RBA for this video, because I think it is uh, easily the superior category. Like, it, it, it pretty much only makes the game better. The, the only downside to it is that it's not vanilla. You do have to use a mod, but like even then, it's such a small mod that it barely even qualifies. Um, and everything that works for RBA will also work for non-RBA, so uh, I won't be talking about that too much. Um, so now we move on to the item check. So this is a very important part of the run. This is where we're going to actually go into our collection and look through and see which items we are missing. Now there are some items that we will always be missing at this point, um, and those include the cousins for Six Through Moon and the cousins for the constellations because we've only played the constellations once up to this point, and we've only played Six Through Moon once, so it's impossible to have those cousins here. But what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to let us look through and see which items we missed on Six Through Moon in particular, and also on the constellations, and then when we play those levels the second time to get the cousins, uh, we can go back and get any other items that we missed. So what I recommend doing... Um, what I do is I just have a notepad by my computer, and for this part I'll look on the spreadsheet, I'll figure out which items I'm missing, and I'll just write them down, and next to the item name I'll write down the level where I plan to get it. So like, if there's an object that I missed on Make a Star 6, I'll write the object name and then I'll put Make a Star 6 next to it so I know to get it there. And then when I'm playing through those levels again, I'll just, you know, refer to my notepad and see which items I need to get. And I like to cross them off as I get them. You can also do this in just like a notepad file on your computer. Uh, the only problem with that is that it's a little bit harder to manage that while you're playing the game because, of course, reroll will pause when the window is not active. Um, so it just makes it more difficult. But whatever works for you. Um, and the first time you do your run, you do a run, rather, uh, you're probably going to be missing quite a few items. I think it is still worth doing this step, um, like no matter how many items you're missing, because the, the thing that you really don't want to do is you don't want to look in your collection, see one item that's missing, figure out what level you need, go play that level, get the item, come back, and then do it again for every single item that you're missing. Because that is just going to take so much time. Um, you'll, you'll just be there forever. So it, it really helps to just write them all down, figure out like which, which ones you need in each level, and then when you play those levels the second time, you can just get them. Uh, and you won't have to keep replaying levels over and over. So, 
Uh, we're going to move on now to Stars and Moon Part 2. So in this section, we are going to do 6 through Moon any percent, and also get the Cousins, and we will also get any objects that we found we were missing in the item check. Uh, I think that section is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, then we do Eternals. So I do need to talk a little bit extra about Eternals. Um, there are three levels in the game that are Eternal levels. Eternal 1, Eternal 2, and Eternal 3. And essentially the idea behind these levels is that you have no time limit and you can just exit the level whenever you want. Um, and that is very helpful to us because if we're missing an object that is on one of these eternal levels, we can go in that level, go straight to the object, pick it up, and then just exit the level instantly. We don't have to like finish the level, get to any goal size. We can just go in and get out. Uh, and there's one eternal level for each map, essentially. There's one for the house that's in the smaller levels at the start. There's one for the um, town that's in the medium levels. And then there's one for the big levels, like Make the Moon. Um, so you can kind of use that to figure out, okay, like which, uh, which level might this be on. They pretty much copy the, uh, layout of the corresponding level. So for Eternal 1, it'll be basically the same as Make a Star 4 with like a couple of small differences. Uh, Eternal 2 is Make a Star 8, and then Eternal 3 is Make the Moon. Um, one interesting thing about these levels is that because... You can exit the level anytime you want, there's no goal size. It kind of wouldn't make sense uh, to force you to play the level twice to get the cousin. So th on these levels, and only these levels, the cousins will appear on the first playthrough. So we only technically need to play these levels once. Um, except for Eternal 2, probably, which I will get to in a little bit. But yeah, so in this section, we're just going to play through each of these levels once and uh, get the cousins there and any other items that we need on those levels, and that's it. Uh, so that section will probably be pretty short. There's not a whole lot to do on those levels. So we can go ahead and move on. Uh, the next one is Ring Luck, and this uh, we're going to need to talk about a bit also. So. There are four ring objects in the game. Let me bring up the pictures of those. There's the diamond ring, the sapphire ring, the emerald ring, and the ruby ring. So they all look the same, just different colors. And the rings are uh, unique in that they only have random spawns except for the ruby ring. There is one level where you can always get a ruby ring, but the other three rings you can only get randomly. Um, which does introduce a bit of a luck element into the game. So the level that you can always get a ruby ring on is Mega Star 3, and I will show you where you can get that when we do a video for that level. Uh, generally, you only do that Um, it, it kind of depends. We'll, we'll talk about it later. We don't need to get into that right now. But the, the locations where you can get a random ring are Make a Star 2, there's a random ring. Make a Star 8, there's a random ring. And in Eternal 2, there's a random ring. So when we play Make a Star when we play all of those levels, actually, um, it's a good idea to just go ahead and get the ring. Uh, since you're in the level anyway. So, if everything goes perfectly, you can actually have all of the rings by the time you get to the ring luck section, and you won't have to do anything here. But in the event that you don't have all the rings already, you will need to get the ones that you're missing here. So, um, the way we do that is we play Eternal 2. And I probably should have had a video ready for this section. I think I can pull this up from my last run. Let me just find the right place. Ring lock, there we go. So, 
So that's eternal three. Oh, did I have no ring luck? Dang, I didn't have any of this this run. That's lucky. Okay. Uh, let me pull up another video then. It's in one of these. We will find it. Don't worry. All right, this one should have it. Ring lock. Yeah, okay. So we're going to Eternal 2 here. Oh, did I do make a star 8? Uh, well, this will this will show you where to get it. So you go on Eternal 2, and it's... Did I go and make a star 8? Must have been Eternal. Yeah, it was, okay. So yeah, you go on Eternal 2, you go over to this side here, and down uh, down into this gutter. And at the very end of this path, there will be a ring. You can see what color it is as soon as you turn the corner, and then you can just immediately pick it up and quit the level since it's Eternal. And you'll see I'm going to do that again since I'm still missing a ring. I'm not sure how many I'm missing. Uh, looks like we do this a few times in this one. But yeah, that's the fastest way to get to just get a random ring. So um, at this, if you get to this point and you don't have all of them, you basically just keep doing this until you get all of the rings. And it might take a long time. It might not take any time. It's just RNG. It's a 25% chance each time to get the ring you want. Uh, so yeah. And again, we'll talk about where uh, the the other locations you can get rings in later videos. So next up, we have Constellations Part 2. Um, so this time, we're just going to play through the Constellation levels again. And this time, we're going to play them as fast as possible and get the Cousin. Um, and then any other items that were missing there. One more thing I should probably mention about Ring Luck, I guess, is that, like I said, if you play Make a Star 3, there's a guaranteed Ruby Ring. I think it might be faster to actually just play through 3 to get the Ruby Ring instead of... If that's... if you're missing exactly the Ruby Ring, um, rather than trying to get it in Eternal, because, like, statistically... You're going to have to play it four times, uh, which I think is going to take longer four attempts than just playing through three once. So that's probably worth doing, unless you're feeling lucky, I guess. Uh, but yeah, after the Constellations Part 2, um, I guess that just always shows up. Okay. Uh, after Constellations Part 2, you're going to go back and check your collection, and if everything went well, you'll actually just be done. Um, and I should talk about when the timer stops. So let's bring up the rules here. Uh, time starts on selecting New Game Prompt, which is the same as any percent. Time ends when you see the balloons in the collection menu after completing the collection. So what will happen... And we can open one of these videos to show that. Oh, let me mute that. Probably after this. So we're going to go to the collection here, and then you'll see the king starts talking. And as soon as he stops, 
you'll see the collection screen and you'll see the five balloons and the timer stops. Uh, you might have to retime this, but it doesn't really matter too much. And that works the same in normal and in RBA. Now, if you don't have all the objects there, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work. So you're going to have to essentially do an item check again, where you go in, you look at all the items you're missing, and you say, OK, what level can I get that on? And then you just go back and play those levels and get the objects, and you keep doing that until you have all the objects. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the route. So. Uh, let's move on here. Um, let's see. Item check and missing objects. I think I was just gonna talk about the item check here, but I kind of talk I kind of said everything I wanted to about it on the last slide. Uh, kind of same for missing objects. Um, One thing I do want to say is that you, you shouldn't really worry about missing objects too much, especially when you're just starting out. Like, there are so many objects in the game, you're basically always going to miss some. Um, like, you're going to have to grind for a long time to not miss any objects, and even then it's difficult because not only do you have to remember to get all the objects, it's also possible if you bump into a wall objects will fall off and it can be hard to see what fell off or maybe the thing that fell off is too hard to go back and get. Um, so it's it's pretty unrealistic to think that you're not going to miss anything, especially when you're just starting out. So don't worry too much about it, just make sure you do the item check, uh, make sure you figure out all of the objects that you still need to get and get them when you go to those levels. And yeah, just don't don't stress out too much about it, I think is is my advice. Every time you you do a run also you're gonna get a little bit better because uh there will be an object that you're missing and you're like, oh where is this object? And you can't find it, and then you finally find it, and then the next time you're like, Oh, I remember that from last time. So uh like it, it gets easier every time. And that is it for the intro video. So the plan after this is essentially just going to be to do one video for each level playthrough. Uh, some of them will be pretty short, so we can condense multiple levels into one video. Like I'll probably do all of the eternal levels in one video, since those are all pretty short. Um, I'm not going to do a separate video for like Ring Luck, for example, because I already talked about Ring Luck in this video, and then uh, when we do videos on the relevant sections, I'll mention that you should get the ring there. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. So I'll just wait one second here to see if anyone in chat has any questions they want to add. And additionally, if anyone watching the video has any questions, feel free to leave a comment, or you can also reach me on Discord. Uh, my Discord is PyMittens9959, uh, I think. Let me double check that. Why does that show my number? I at myself. But yeah, I mean I'm in the I'm in the Katamari Discord, so you can find me on there. You can find other people in there too who know a lot about this. Um <laughs> thank you for the clap. Uh shout outs to Grass and Martini who made a lot of this possible. Um Grass, of course, is just really really good at this game he's spent a lot of time playing any percent and he knows uh, a lot about this game he's better at it than pretty much anyone else 
and Martini was, uh, he hasn't played in a while, but he was also very good at this game, and he did a lot of work on the 1438 route, actually, before I even started playing. Um, we kind of both did it independently, so I don't think, like, there's anything specific in the resources that I made uh, that I need to give him too much credit for, although I think he did make the ori original item spreadsheet. Like, he made the... He did the name and the size columns, essentially. So definitely shout out to him for that. Uh, and then I added the location stuff for the 1438. <laughs> All right, yeah, Dunawaki, Dunawaki also gets a shout out. Um, he allegedly did the first run, although was it unrecorded? Do you have a recording? I forget. I think it was a segmented run, right? On PS2. Uh, and then I guess that led Grass to doing the first 1438. The first 1438 that Grass did uh, actually happened before I even started playing this game, so... I don't know, you tell me. Um, and that was that one was done by Grass. Let's bring it up. Where is it? And it's actually still on the leaderboards. It's the only one he's done. It was 9 hours, 34 minutes, and 50 seconds. Uh, so if anyone wants to get the free Cut the Grass, Martini did the first one. Uh, Martini did do a 15-hour run. That was his first run. Um, but I think, yeah, 1438. What would we have to do as of specific date? Okay, Grass did do his first. All right. Yeah, I think, I think that's it though. So that will be the end of the video. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. See you in the next video.